ciao. You're going to disconnect the negative battery terminal and start by removing the upper radiator hose. Make sure you have a bucket below or that you've drained some of the fluid out of the radiator petcock before you begin. Remove the four 12 millimeter nuts holding the fan to the fan pulley. Remove the radiator fan and fan shroud. Loosen the power steering pump adjusting nut and lock nut. These are 14 millimeter. Loosen the 14 millimeter lock nut on the alternator and the 12 millimeter adjusting nut. Loosen the 14 millimeter AC idler pulley, center nut, and adjusting bolt. Remove the power steering pulley and belt. Remove the alternator pulley behind the power steering pulley. Remove all the accessory belts and set them aside. Next, you're gonna remove the three spark plug wires from the distributor and move them out of the way. Remove the upper radiator hose inlet tube. This is two 10 millimeter nuts on a long stud that goes all the way through to the lower inlet tube. There was some extra fluid coming out because I didn't drain any in advance. I do recommend draining some of the fluid out of the lower radiator petcock before starting this job. Remove the upper timing belt dust cover. There's 11 10 millimeter bolts. Remove the power steering bracket, the triangle thing. It's got three 14 millimeter bolts and you wanna make sure you keep track of each of these because they are different sizes. Remove the fan bracket bolts. These are also 14 millimeter. Before going any further, we want to make sure that the engine is at TDC. So rotate it clockwise until all three of the timing marks line up. Next, you're going to remove the four little bolts on the pulley. Remove the crankshaft pulley bolt. There are two ways to do this. You can use a crankshaft pulley holder tool if you have one. I use the bump method. Since the engine turns clockwise, I remove the fuel fuse and set my breaker bar up against the lower front part of the frame, then use the engine to break the bolt loose. I'll put a link in the comments to a helpful video since I couldn't perform the duty and film it. Remove the number one tensioner by removing the upper water pump bolt that is holding the spring, which is a 12 millimeter, and then loosen the number one tensioner, which is a 14 millimeter, that center bolt. Just remove the three 10 millimeter bolts holding on the lower timing cover and remove the timing belt. There are seven 12 millimeter bolts that are holding on the water pump and the three bolts that were holding on the lower radiator hose uh, for the thermostat. We're gonna remove all of those. There wasn't much left of this thermostat and gasket, so I'm happy we are replacing it. Remove the water pump, making a note of the different sizes of water pump bolts. Make sure to cover the holes while cleaning the area. Reinstall the water pump. So these two, 
with the washers get to torqued to 13 foot-pounds and the rest of them get torqued to 14 foot-pounds. We're going to remove the metal cover behind the number two tensioner. There, we're going to take out the four 10 millimeter bolts. There's a little tab that sticks into the plastic covering, uh, so you'll need to pry it out. It takes a little finagling. I loosened the hard lines on top of the plenum just to give myself more wiggle room. It was just one 12 millimeter bolt. Now we're going to remove the number two tensioner. This was my least favorite part of this whole job. You need a quarter inch drive ratchet with a six inch extension or longer, a 12 millimeter socket, a magnet, and some luck. There were lots of search and rescue missions. I even found an old quarter inch drive 12 millimeter socket that someone lost sitting on top of the engine. When my quarter inch drive can't do the job, I put an adapter on so I can use my 3 8 uh, 3 8 inch drive wrench. And like I said, I should have drained some of the coolant beforehand. I cleaned off the gasket maker that came stock with the number two tensioner and put fresh gasket maker in there, paying close attention to the instructions for drying time. When installing the number two idler pulley, you wanna put the back bolts on first, um, and then it'll level out enough that you can put the front bolts on. And once the gasket maker is dry, after about an hour, these bolts need to be torqued to 13 foot-pounds. This is very important since this is a high vibration engine. Okay, so lining up all timing marks before putting the timing belt back on. So we've got this timing mark with that one, this one with that one, and then down here we have this notch with that little notch. Someone was nice enough to write R and L on here, but as a fancy reminder, right is the passenger side left is the driver's side. So when you line up these marks on the timing belt, left is gonna be that side. I lined the timing belt up on the cams first, then took all the slack out of the right-hand side, wrapped it around the lower drive pulley, and then slipped it up over the number one tensioner, which I left pretty loose. Once the timing belt is on, you want to make sure the number one tensioner is almost tight, then leverage it as far as you can to the right with a pry bar while tightening it down. Do not put the spring this way, otherwise it'll pop out when you try to leverage it over. Put the spring this way, leverage it with a pair of vice grips and get it underneath the other spring, it'll come right up. You're going to put the spring on from left to right with a pair of vice grips. I highly recommend you wear gloves as the spring can shoot off or you can slip very easily. Loosen the number one tensioner 180 degrees and rotate the engine twice so the tensioner finds its correct tension. And this engine rotates clockwise. Recheck all your timing marks and if they're good, retorque your number one tensioner to 27 foot pounds. The gasket goes around the thermostat. There's actually a little slot for it. And when installing the thermostat, Toyota says to put the relief at 12 o'clock, then reinstall the lower radiator hose. Put the fan pulley back on and torque the three bolts to 30 foot pounds.
When the power steering bracket goes back on, it's also torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Put the lower timing cover on and torque the 10 millimeter bolts to four foot-pounds. If you took the timing belt guide plate off at any time, make sure that the bevel is facing away from the engine before putting the crank pulley back on. Put the crank pulley back on. The crank pulley bolt is torqued to 181 foot-pounds. Once torqued, you can put the four small vibration dampener bolts back in and torque them to around nine foot-pounds. Once the gasket maker is dry and the bolts are torqued, you can put the metal insert back into the rear of the cam dust plate. Those four little bolts are torqued to six foot-pounds. Put the upper timing cover back on. The 11 bolts are torqued to four foot-pounds. The alternator belt and pulley are going back on. The alternator belt is the longest belt and it is ribbed, not a V-belt. Next, you're going to reinstall the AC V-belt. Lastly, the power steering pulley and V-belt. Before tightening the power steering belt and the alternator belt, the pulleys need to be cinched down by reinstalling the four 12 millimeter fan nuts. Reinstall the upper coolant inlet hose using fresh gasket maker. Adjust and tighten the power steering pump belt, the alternator belt, and the AC belt. Once the gasket maker is dry, put coolant back into the engine and properly burp it by turning the heater core all the way to hot and blasting it at full blast while running the engine with the radiator cap off. Thank you so much for watching. If you subscribe, like, or comment below, that helps the YouTube algorithm find more people so we can help them with these awesome videos.